In the final step, step 6, we'll set up the options screen so that it retains any changes the user makes once the OK button is pressed. To do this, create a new layer at the top of the timeline and label it VAR. Select frame 1 of the VAR layer and open the Actions panel. Create a new object named Options. This will hold the various option states. We need to put the new object inside a conditional statement, which will test to see if the object already exists. Select frame 10 of the Actions layer. Directly beneath the Difficulty Option Data Provider, set the initial state of the Option Stepper. Next, set the initial state of the Bloom button and the AA button. Set the Edge AA button and Hardware AA button to be disabled or enabled based upon the selected state of the AA button checkbox. If the property options.edgeaa has not yet been defined, set Edge AA button's selected state to true, otherwise we'll set it to whatever options.edgeaa is. Do the same for the initial state of the Hardware AA button, but set it to false if it is undefined. Also set the initial state of the sound slider. The final bit of code will allow the user to exit the options screen and return to the main menu when either cancel or OK is pressed. This function, return to main menu, will be executed when the user presses the OK button. The action script will update the options object with all of the parameters from the options screen and return the user to the main menu. When the user presses the cancel button, the action script will instead execute the cancel to main menu function, which simply returns the user to the main menu without updating the options object. Next, we'll add the event listeners for the OK and cancel buttons. So as you can see, OK button listens for click. If it receives a click, it executes return to main menu, and cancel button will execute cancel to main menu. Finally, we'll give default focus to the cancel button. Save your progress and test the movie. So as you can see here, I'm changing some of the options. The radio buttons for anti-aliasing are disabled, but once I put a check mark in this field, they become enabled. Now if I press OK and return to the options screen, all of my settings have been saved. So here I'll change the volume slider and press OK, come back, still at the same spot. If I make a change now and press Cancel and go back to Options, the change did not register. This concludes Getting Started with Click Tutorial 1.